Y'all, I got something special planned today for us, and that's right, us, because you're gonna come along with me. I've decided to team up with a chef's tour here in Bangkok and go on their Chinatown food tour. We're gonna dive deep into Chinatown here and find the best local eats in Bangkok. So I hope you're ready for a local delicious food tour here in Bangkok's Chinatown. For you that don't know, my name's Max of My Kind of Eats. Let's head that way. Minute, but not my god today we're not wasting any time we are straight down back alleys i mean you can feel the history in here this is little auntie little make auntie. a special Oh, look at this local joint we got. We got the auntie here doing kwe tao lot, which actually is a noodle dish, which they used to roll almost like a, you could say like a sushi. They're not doing it like that anymore, but we're gonna get in here and get the kwe tao lot. All right, and check these noodles out. You can automatically just smell that pork. It's so fragrant. You see you got lots of bean sprouts. You got those big, thick rice noodles, and then a bunch of chives, fried garlic, all layered on top. Pop me on just a little bit of everything here. Try it out. The pork tastes a lot like almost like a roasted pork belly. It's got just a little bit of soy sauce umami sweetness to it. And then you do, you get those rice noodles. But you see the rice noodles, they got the red dots in them. That's actually some dried out shrimp. And you get that little sweetness, that little fishiness, the cleanness of the rice noodles. That is awesome. But I just got handed some chili oil, so you know we're not even gonna waste any more time. That chili oil is nice and spicy, a little bit sour, really rounds out the dish beautifully. You get the like pork, it's almost like a luxury, the way it's so fatty and delicate. Yet you get the rice noodles, which are so light. Oh yeah, I would take that any day. I'm telling y'all, this is true street food right here. Check it over my shoulder, trying not to get hit by a bike. I mean, this is street food, as authentic as you can get. That lady has got that dish down. I mean, she's cooking it with a lot of love and a lot of passion. Been cooking that dish, that single dish, for over 60 years. Phenomenal start to the day. Okay, we got the tofu pudding, we got it in the ginger soup, and then we got it with the ginkgo nuts. What I love about theirs already is they almost get you like these little tiny fried little dough sticks. Almost to remind me of like the Utah, but smaller, and looks like they're fried a little bit harder. Get a little bit of everything in this bite here. Favorite part of the fried little dough sticks. They really break up the texture, give you something crunchy. Other than that, it is an intense ginger soup. I feel my body being cleansed. There's nothing subtle about that ginger. I mean, it is strong, but what I do love is you're getting three different types of sugar. You're getting like a sugar cane, then they have like another mixture of sugar. You see it looks like plain white. Now I don't know if it's like a brown sugar or a palm sugar, but you need all those sugars to help bounce out with that intense ginger. But we still got a lot to eat, so let's head to the next one. Going snack mode here. Going to get Chinese chives, but two different ways. One where they've already mixed it with the sticky rice flour and then going to fry it up, and one where they've taken the sticky rice flour and made it into a dumpling. It's going to be stuffed full of the chives. Now I'm a chive lover, and these fried up. What I love about these, not only are they stuffed with chives, but they're a mandatory, you gotta dip them in some sauce. That dumpling is that pure sticky rice, ooey gooey chewy, but it's got a great crunch on it because they're using so much oil and a very high heat, and then there's just nice, cooked down, sweet chives on the inside. But the winner for me, it's all about that sauce, you've gotta have the sauce. So I've had these before where they're already mixing in batter like this, but I've never seen them this thick. I mean, they look ooey and gooey.
That reminds me of like the Quay sticky rice desserts, the way it's so thick and the sticky rice just has this natural sweetness to it already, but then you get that big burst of chives and again, that sauce, get it in that sauce as much as you can. Hey, and props to them for getting that flat iron skillet char on it. That is intense. Y'all, this tour is crazy. I don't think we've walked more than half a block before eating. Like, we were we were two stalls down, and now we're at our next spot. I better pace myself. Oh, he's getting that smokiness in there. Did y'all see that flame? That is a thing of beauty. <laughs> Since we're done with snacking, back to the meals. We got a big old thing of noodles here and some satay. These noodles are looking at me and telling me, if you took a bite of me, I'm going to give you third degree burn. So I'm going to wait on them. I'm going to put some in a separate bowl and just wait. But the satay's here. Get after that. Well, it's fresh and hot off the grill. We got a little variety pack here. We got chicken, pork, beef, liver, intestine, and the shrimp. Just start with the chicken and work our way around. Freshly grilled satay, but this sauce is just making my mouth water. Chili paste, peanuts, and coconut. This is all me right here. I want a gallon of that sauce to go home with me. I think we're finally at manageable levels with this soup. The broth is nice and light, nice little meaty flavor coming from it. A little bit of a sweetness. You get that egg in there, it gives it like a luxuriousness. You get the springiness from the glass noodles, but then you just get that texture from the cooked down lettuce. It's nice, but you know this needs some chili sauce for me. Fermented tofu, pickled garlic, and then chilies. How could this sauce not be good? I mean, that is a flavor packed sauce. Just two dishes back to back where the sauce is everything. You see how fast she whips these out? You can tell she's got a couple years of experience. She's just barely turning her hands and just one, two, three, four. They come out of there so quickly. So I've eaten these before, but I've never seen them made. I didn't realize they puffed up this much. Look how much they're expanding. better way to eat these and fresh out of the fryer. I've never had them this fresh before and they got them in a little sweet chili sauce. This is kind of funny. I used to think those were good but that is good. Wow fresh out of the fryer. They're extremely warm. Still got that puffiness to them so they're soft and they've started to just soak in that sweet chili sauce. Look at that sea bass fish meat they grind it up with some egg and then chili paste. That's all this is. But the key to this is just getting it freshly fried. Wow. 
Try it. I can. I think curry be more spicy. We're at the famous Czech Play, a place that's been serving up cheap, delicious curry to locals for years. As you can tell, they don't even have tables out here. They just have these red plastic stools. You just take a seat and start digging into your curry. I got one of the most popular, the green curry with chicken. Thank goodness found some fresh chilies and fish sauce to throw on top. I got a huge chunk of chilies and fish sauce that was salty, that was spicy. But what you gotta like about this curry, it's not overpowering with the coconut milk. It's a little bit thinner and you get more of the actual curry paste. Love that with the Chinese sausage, a big kick of sweetness, you get a little bit of bitter, and just all those traditional Chinese herbs and spice flavor. See if I can't get what I think is gonna be a money bite here, a little bit of Chinese sausage, a little chicken, rice, and lots of that curry. That is pure money, you get the nice lean chicken, you get that beautiful curry sauce, and that Chinese sausage for a well-balanced bite. What do you have? Getting a little break here. It's not quite ready. What we're going for is like a rice soup where they cook the spare ribs in it. People are already lining up for it though. I'm kind of glad we gotta wait just a second. Need that rice and curry to digest this a little bit. Looks hot. This looks incredibly hot. They cracked a the raw egg, poured in the rice soup, and it cooked the egg to a soft boil. I have a ton of things I can add to this, but I'm just gonna break the egg in there, look at that yolk and nice and infused, and then pay my respects for the unspiced up bite. I don't know why, but that reminds me so much of my childhood. Like the broccoli chicken and rice soup, except it's got more of a porky flavor, of course, but that's exactly what that is. Who would have thought, being halfway around the world, eating something that reminds me of my childhood. But we got too many goodies. We gotta get the good good in here now. In one for me. what it is about these little yellow oranges peppers they kind of kick a heat now they are going to bring it but that balances out well spice vinegar definitely haven't even got the main show yet though i want to try a piece of the pork rib good quality pork i mean it just tastes so fresh and so clean and so flavorful now it's not going to be you fall off the bone baby back ribs got a little bit chew to it locals are going to like a little bit more of a chew so you know i know that going into it Next up we got Chi Kuei, which actually when Chinese people migrated down here, they didn't want to spend any money because they wanted to save money to bring their family with them. So all they would eat is rice, like mushrooms, and preserved radish. It's kind of how this dish got started, because exactly what it is. Uh, yeah, put it on there. Really hot. Nice, slick rice cake, big funkiness, big sweetness from the radish, and a little bit of earthiness from the mushroom. That's a nice little tea time snack. So we've come to Healthy Boy, one of the largest soy sauce producers in all of Thailand for, you know, just your normal things like soy sauce ice cream. And we got it. We got our soy sauce flavored ice cream, but y'all, just not enough soy sauce for me, so I got some to drizzle on top. 
I'll admit the, the consistency of this ice cream is on point. If a Wendy's Frosty and salted caramel ice cream had a baby, that's what you'd have right here. Y'all, I'm not gonna admit, I was a hater. I did not believe in this, but now Romantic Night seems like an appropriate name to me. So I just gotta explain, when you make the actual soy sauce, you have a bunch of different layers. This is coming from the bottom. The bottom layer of the soy sauce process kinda has like a caramel consistency to it anyways. That's what they're using to make the ice cream, and that's why you're getting those caramel salty notes. Check out the variety of this. They say you can use it with duck or your ice cream here. <laughs> The possibilities are endless. This place is so big and so crowded, the waiters and waitresses don't have time to come down, so they have a little hook right here. They'll snap on the order and bring it, let it fly down. Check this one out. We got the green mango, we got the coconut syrup, bird's eye chili, cilantro, onion. This looks fantastic. The textures are nowhere near like each other, but this just reminds me of Rojac from Malaysia. I'm telling y'all, the coconut sugar is extremely strong in this, and then the other flavors are gonna play on it. You get the mangoes that are nice and sour, give you a little bit of crunch, but then you get the dried shrimp, got a little funkiness to them, you get the cilantro, the onion, and the bird's eye chilies, which help cut through that sugar. I may go through this whole bowl of sauce, I cannot stop eating this. You just get all that creamy, buttery fat. You get that fresh, lean prawn meat. And then you get it in that green chili sauce that's got almost that little bit of sour kick. It's chili, it's fresh. Get a big dip dip, make sure you get all that sediment. So this is original Tom Yum. You can tell because it doesn't have the coconut milk in it, but so this is gonna be a spicy, sour type of soup. Loaded with seafood in here. You see all the aromatics, the holy basil, see some chilies, and then of course, it's gotta have its mushrooms as well to get that little bit of earthiness. Got everything I want here. Got some chili, some fish, and then a nice little mushroom. Should get all components with this. Oh man, I could eat this so much just because it's nice, sour, a little bit spicy, but not too heavy. And you're supposed to eat your vegetables first, but it looks like I saved them for last for the morning glory. Look at this, stir-fried morning glory, thick sauce. I mean, I can smell the saltiness from the soy sauce. And then look, they are not holding back on the garlic. Thank you, T and K seafood. You can't not love that. The actual stems are just so crunchy. You get the intense saltiness, the garlic. I mean, the garlic is just on my breath. I can just smell it myself. Get a little bit of chili for a kick of heat. But that is just crunchy, fresh vegetables, salty, soy sauce, stir-fried smokiness with a ton of garlic. It's the subtle things like the garlic. It's cooked down just enough where some of it's sweet, but some of it's still raw enough that it gives you that intense garlic burn. I mean, we got whole garlic, we got minced garlic, we got garlic on garlic on garlic. Mm -hmm. Not a tourist trap here, a real deal delicious seafood feast. So we're here to get the Bata Kong. Now this doll has had the Michelin recommendation for two years in a row, and you can tell by this line of people.
Y'all, the way he works his dough is so smooth, so rhythm, and almost looks like he's dancing with his hands. We got our Chinese fried donuts, and you see what they dip them in here is like a pandan coconut. I mean, I almost want to call it icing just due to the consistency. To say I'm excited is an understatement. <laughs> Y'all me petty right now, I'm double dipping so nobody can get in here besides me. The only way I'm gonna stop eating these is when there's nothing left. Ooh. I don't know if I've ever hated myself and been so happy at the same time in my life. I did not need to eat this whole bag of fried up Chinese donuts, but I'm so glad I did. Time for the last thing today and our last final dessert. We gotta get some mango sticky rice wine in Thailand. We didn't go for it all though. Got our Chinese donuts right here, and now we're about to get our mango sticky rice right here. The mango is right where you want it. I mean, I can cut through it with a plastic fork. Superb. The mango is just so melting your mouth. Mm. Top notch tour. No way I could have done over half of that by myself, not to mention all that I've learned. Which kind of leads me to the main point, y'all. I've enjoyed working with the chef tour so much that we've decided to work together even more and bring y'all a massive series. We're gonna go to India, Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. We're gonna have so much delicious content for y'all. So my kind of beats and a chef tour have a massive thing coming later this year that you need to stay tuned for. So I hope you like this one because there's a lot more coming just like it. So Max and my kind of beats, I'll catch you at the next video.